pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we have a roll call, please? Mr. Person? Here. Mr. Prince? Here. Ms. Breyer? Here. Mr. Pavoni? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Corman? Here. Ms. Palmer? Here. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. All present. Thank you, Bonnie. First item on the agenda is a proclamation for a very special gentleman. So I'm going to ask our city attorney to come up and participate. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's uh, Zanetta Fontes and I are jointly reading a proclamation, which is a little different from the normal procedure because Judge Shellen was the mentor to both of us. Aww. So we're going to alternate on the proclamation. So let Zanetta go first. Whereas Gerard M. Shellen served as Renton City Attorney for 27 years, having served five mayors and 11 city councils, and whereas during his tenure as Renton City Attorney, Gerard M. Shellen negotiated with BNSF, Boeing, and the Monaghan family for the acquisition of the first 20 acres of land that we enjoy today as Jean Poulon Memorial Beach Park. And whereas Gerard M. Shellen was appointed to the King County Superior Court in 1977 by Governor Dixie Lee Ray and was twice elected by his fellow judges as the presiding judge of the King County Superior Court and Whereas during his tenure on the King County Superior Court, Judge Shellen founded the Family Law Department in King County Superior Court to relieve court congestion, negotiated with the County Council to obtain five new judicial positions, and negotiated for the construction of five new courtrooms for those new judicial positions, and... Whereas, while serving the citizens of King County, Judge Shellen earned numerous awards, including the Louis Brandeis Award, the Outstanding Judge Award, and the Washington Jurist Award, and... Whereas Judge Shellen left the King County <coughs> Superior Court and joined the Judicial Arbitration and Mediation Services in 1989, and has distinguished himself, uh, himself as a mediator and arbitrator, having received awards for excellence in dispute resolution and a Distinguished Service Award, and... Whereas, although retired, Judge Shellen still serves the citizens of King County by conducting arbitrations and mediations pro bono. And we should mention there's many other things that could be written, but we're limited in space on a proclamation. So, and now, now, now therefore, therefore, I, Dennis, Dennis Law, Mayor of the City of Renton, do hereby proclaim July 14, 2014, to be Judge Gerard M. Shellen Day in the City of Renton, and I encourage all citizens to join in this special observance. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. President. I move the procla proclamation be uh, approved as read. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Person, seconded by Mr. Prince. The council approve the proclamation. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Well, Judge Shellen, it's my pleasure to be able to present you with this proclamation. I also have another special gift that's been reserved for very few people since I've been mayor over the last uh, six and a half years. And this is a key to the city. And um, it reads, City of Renton, key to the city, presented to Judge Gerard M. Shellen for your devoted years of service to the city. I, I need to tell you, I'm, I had to wrestle with this for a while because giving you a key to the city made me very nervous. <laughs> but since we've gone to electronic card keys, it's not really a problem. <laughs> 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 Miss 
Mr. Mayor, members of the Renton City Council, I'm much humbled to appear before you here and presenting me with this award. Before I go any further, I'd like to, with your permission, introduce members of the family who are present here, and they can stand up if their name is called, if they remember their name. My wife, Barbara, I should say Barbara, Barbara's dad was mayor of the city of Renton, Gerard Baxter, between 1950 and 1960. Unfortunately, he died at age 57 at a heart attack. He was a good mayor and a very good and honest person. Then next, I want to introduce uh, Don Lynn, my stepdaughter. Uh, she couldn't wear her prime uh, dress that she had, but she just came from work. She is a certified medical assistant at the uh, Virginia Mason Clinic in uh, Issaquah, and she came right here. My granddaughter, Cassie, stand up. She's a photographer in the family, and she takes some pictures. Uh, Joe Baxter, as I say, died at age 57. He was survived by his spouse, Sarah M. Baxter. Sarah died at age 102 and a half. Whoa. Mm -hmm. wow. When she reached 100, we had a party for her at the retirement home down on Rainy Avenue, a Lakeshore Retirement Home, where she had been a number of years. Over 100 people showed up. And always remember, the mayor also showed up with a proclamation making it Sarah M. Baxter Day. And I can tell you quite frankly, this was one of the greatest moments of her life that she well remembered being so recognized. In the interest of complete uh, openness and transparency, I should also say at the time the mayor showed up to present her, I think it was close to an election year. <laughs> and he picked up quite a few of the senior citizens who were present. <laughs> he did a good job, Ben, and I so appreciate it. <laughs> this is a special day for me, and I hope you don't mind if I inject some personal notes. On this very day, 70 years ago to the day, July 14, 1944, I was in the military, I was in the Army Counterintelligence Corps in a small community south of Paris. At that time, July 14, 1944, the Germans were still occupying Paris. Someone in this little town, and the name I've forgotten, told me it was Bastille Day. Bastille Day in French is, in France, is a national holiday that occurred in 1789. None of us were present there, of course. <laughs> when they liberated uh, seven prisoners, four or seven prisoners at the Bastille, and which started the French Revolution, which was entirely quite bloody in 1789, certainly less pe peaceful than ours. It was only two and a half weeks after this encounter I had in this little village that we marched into Paris when it was liberated on August 25, 1944 by our troops, American troops, and the French troops. Whenever you spend 27 years in one job as attorney for a city, you will undoubtedly remember certain cases that stick in your mind and probably will remain there for the rest of my life. I'm going to mention them briefly. 
This happened about a little over 50 years ago. None of you were born yet. <laughs> That's almost two generations ago. One of the largest companies in the world, Shell Oil Company, filed a petition with the city and the planning commission to construct and maintain a tank farm in the valley down the street here. The city rightly rejected that petition for the simple reason that it would be detrimental to the growth of our city. It would have problems with gas emission, noxious gas, et uh, gases, etc. Anyhow, we denied the petition. Shell Oil Company sued us. And I defended in a superior court in King County. It was a tough battle because they had unlimited resources and we didn't. Let me interrupt us for a minute talking about resources. I called the mayor this morning <laughs> to verify that he's not pulling a fast one on me that we have at seven o'clock. And you know what happened? First time in my experience in 64 years of practice in law, having called many mayors in different cities doing my work, he answered the phone himself. <laughs> <laughs> no secretary, no assistant. This is unheard of. <laughs> Pennywise, et cetera, et cetera. No wonder you can balance the budget so easily. Anyhow, <laughs> we went to court and it was a battle because Shell had unlimited resources, ours were limited. I had to defend it. I hired and probably the only good move I made, a professor at the University of Washington who was an expert on uh, gases and uh, uh, different things. He was very good. What also helped in this case is that I had asked the judge during the proceedings that I would appreciate if he would take a trip out to Renton. Some judges wouldn't know where Renton is located, but he knew and he came to look at the uh, acreage that Shell owned and wanted to develop. Anyhow, the judge, after a lengthy trial, held in our favor, supported the city, and denied the petition of Shell Oil Company, which in my opinion, if you go back the two generations, helped the city to develop the valley in a more beneficial economic and environmental standpoint than having a tank farm there, which would have been disastrous to our future. The judge made the decisions no longer with us, but he was a good judge. I always recognized him for taking interest in coming out to look at the scene, which some judges won't do. The second incident in my experience over the 27 years, and I might tell you quite frankly, Dennis answered the phone, it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the second incident that I remember as long as I live did not involve a lawsuit, but it was the most complex legal manner, matter that I had encountered. I started working for the city in 1950. The salary at the time was $100 a month. Which some people will say is too much and some people will say it isn't enough. But as I understand, the city council and the mayor and the infinite wisdom over the last 64 years have adjusted the city attorney's salary uh, somewhat. I'm very happy to see Larry Warren and Senator Fontes having such a good job and so no noteworthy, which doesn't happen in many cities, that our firm, your firm, have represented the city now for 60 years. So we must have done something good. 
The second incident involved my experience when I first got here in 1950, 64 years ago. I was wondering why the city, which then had about 10,000 population, didn't have a park on the waterfront. And we were right there on Lake Washington. It happened, and this is again approximately 55 years ago, that the Boeing Company needed space for the administration building on Park Avenue. The only piece of property available there was a lot which was designated Mother's Park and was uh, donated to the city in perpetuity as a park. The grand tours that people granted it, I think were called Monaghan, is my recollection. They had no children. The Boeing Company, the railroad, Puget Power, and a bunch of other people all got together with the city to see what we could do and maybe arrange a trade. I think I worked on this close to a year, in fact, trying to get help even from the legislature, because during our negotiations, somehow some heirs showed up of the Monahans who didn't live there, they're distant heirs, and they were willing to sign a release, that, but they wanted $10,000 which said was a lot of money then to most of us. It's a lot of money now, but in present value, it's probably 100, 150,000. And they wanted the city to pay that money to buy up the years to get free title. And I pleaded poverty for the city, which I had no trouble doing because they always told me they ran out of money looking what to pay the city attorney at the time. <laughs> <laughs> So anyhow, we negotiated back and forth, and I finally got the, the legislature turned me down. I went to Olympia to see where they would help. They wouldn't. Uh, but finally, I think the Boeing Company and the railroad joined together and dug up the 10000 and paid it to the heirs. The end result is we got 20 acres the initial 20 acres of Gene Coulon Park. Later we had to condemn additional property along the east side to, to make it what the park is today. The Boeing Company built their building and we got additional taxes from the building on uh, Park Avenue. The city also inherited a part of the deal, some leases that we had in the southern part of uh, the lake to somebody for fishing other purpose and we collected some revenue from that but for not for a long time. The end result is we went up with 20 acres of land free and clear. We traded a lot. We uh, Mother's Park. Morgan Company built a large administration building. We got additional revenue and we collected some rentals. And we got the land free and clear and didn't cost the city except for the exchange a dime. Now, that was two generations ago. And most people probably don't remember. It took, I, I tried to check my records because I wouldn't trust my memory, but it took about nine months to put this deal together. It involved a lot of people, a lot of negotiations. But that was the second incident in my career that will stick in my memory indefinitely. Now, when I originally got the notice from the mayor, from, or from Larry, that you're going to present a uh, proclamation, uh, my immediate thought was, and of course I was in error, they're trying to make amends for the lack of payment <laughs> years ago. Uh. And then I remember with the, these two good attorneys sitting here, Zanetta, who incidentally was my bailiff when I was on the bench, 
and uh, I won't put this in writing, Zanetta, but she was the best bailiff I ever had, and loyal, etc. And uh, of course, that was a long, long time ago. But <laughs> I thought first, maybe they want to make amends. But then I recognized the statute of limitations for the one after 64 <laughs> years. There's no way in hell you can get money out of the city for that. <laughs> and we didn't. It is a great, with a great feeling of gratitude to you folks that I stand before you. For the very simple reason, among others, that it was a great opportunity for a young attorney to come to Renton when it had a population of about 10,000, which is now close to 100,000, and start out afresh. Most of the attorneys in my class had probably more ambitions. They all wanted to be in a high rise skyscraper, corner office, looking over the sound and all that. But people forget that lawyers like doctors should learn to practice their profession in smaller communities because in the long run, I think it is more appreciated and it's a great opportunity for a young professional to get started. So I want to thank you as much as I can for the opportunity you gave me 64 years ago to become your attorney and serve for 27 years. It's an experience very few people can enjoy or have the opportunity to enjoy. So I thank you. Wish you all the best of luck. God bless you. Thank you, Judge, and um, I don't want you to think that nothing was accomplished with your visit tonight. You were able to get, for $100 a month, one of the finest parks in all of King County, mm -hmm. Dean Coulomb Park. So we're going to set the bar up a little bit higher for our city attorney. I meet with him tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, we'll see what we can do. But, uh, what part would you behalf? like, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention. Can you hear me all right? I forgot to mention, after the deal was sealed and we got our deed for the 20 acres, Gene Coulon, who was a good friend of mine, walked down to the park. It was a rainy day and we walked over the 20 acres and I never fully realized he had the vision that it would be a regional park. I, I was too narrow. I was happy to get the 20 acres as a genesis of the project. And it was in to develop one of the best additions the city can acquire. And it will be yeah. enjoyed not just by the city residents, basically the regional park. People come from all over. Yeah, that's exactly enjoy right. <laughs> very few cities our size who have that kind of uh, park and facility yeah. for the benefit of our people. Well, you're, ab you're absolutely right. Fred assesses an interest should be congratulated. The only other comment I want to make, I know, Dennis, my time is up, you're going to find me. I I you got the timer going here. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, all I can say is just add it as a credit to the non-payment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is also amazing to me when I see the difference between the city council, the surroundings in 1950, and now. I looked at some, uh, I still get the minutes from the council, council minutes. We had meetings that lasted till 12 or 1 o'clock. I would get home so late, my wife wouldn't believe it. I was at a council meeting. <laughs> I'm explaining to do. But we had fights over 
one-way streets, vacating the alley up in the Renton Islands, which lasted. <laughs> you changed it. I see your minutes, and I'm amazed. You begin your meeting at seven. Sometimes I see adjourned at seven forty-seven. How can you do all that in less than an hour? <laughs> you should be congratulated. It's a pleasure for me and my Thanks. family. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge, and uh, it's great to have your family here and your friends that came to honor you, too. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Covington, let's see you follow the administrative report. You know, I won't even try. I, I would say, just to add to what uh, Judge Shellen said, I think we, the last time we counted, I think we estimate over a million people a year visit Coulon Park, so it is a tremendous legacy that, uh, that you have to <coughs> participated in. So I do have a few items, uh, Council and Mr. Mayor, that I want to report on. Uh, Council received a report of this. I'll try to summarize a little bit. want to announce again two uh, picnics again this week. The first uh, Wednesday, uh, the 16th, will be the Home Liberty Ridge Homeowners Association. Uh, that will be located at Northeast First Street. Uh, they'll be hosting a fundraiser for school supplies for communities and schools. The second uh, picnic will be the La Crosse Homeowners Association. They'll have their picnic uh, uh, Thursday at the common area located at the corner of 35th and Monterey Court. The association will hold a community raffle to raise money for CISR as well. The Renton Hill Neighborhood Association will have their annual picnic on July 23rd, that's next week, at Philip Arnold Park, located at 720 Jones Avenue South. And uh, just a FYI, early in the year, they funded an Easter egg hunt to bring Renton Hill residents and their families together. So as always, with all these picnics, residents are encouraged to bring their favorite potluck dish and attend picnic to get to know their neighbors and city representatives who will be there. Wanted to remind everybody that the demolition removal of the Riverview Park Bridge will commence the week of July 21st and continue until mid-September of this year. The bridge, which was built in the 60s with pilings in the center of the Cedar River, has been rated in poor condition since a structural assessment uh, a couple of years ago. The parking lot along Maple Valley Highway will be closed to the public for this period. Access to Riverview Park will be from the Cedar River Trail. Uh, via of Maplewood Roadside Park to the east or to the narco property of the west. A new single span bridge will be installed next summer, opening in September of 2015. The restroom at Riverview Park will be closed during this period with an accessible porta potty placed on the trail nearby. And just to <coughs> folks' information, we received a grant for this work from the legislature. We really appreciate that uh, gesture for the citizens of Renton. Also, this uh, in a couple of weeks, July 28th, be right after River Days, the Cedar River Gabion repair will begin at the Lower Cedar River Trail between Bron Bronson Way and Logan Avenue. That's to repair those rock-filled uh, gabions, the metal uh, mesh uh, cubes you see on the river. Um, they were damaged in the January 2009 flood. We've secured approval and funding from uh, FEMA for that work. It'll be uh, the trail will be closed from July 28th until mid-September. Um, Visitors will be able to walk along North Riverside Drive and the Upper Cedar River Trail portion just east of the Activity Center. And uh, as Council knows, you've been briefed on several occasions on the services we're participating in with other community service organizations, with faith groups and individuals to assist uh, the homeless uh, population with housing, clothing, and meals. Recently, the council uh, heard comments and concerns regarding alleged illegal activities along the Cedar River Trail uh, and uh, inappropriate activity, uh, some of which was, is attributable to uh, some homeless individuals. So I want to just uh, let folks know the following is an update on various actions the city has taken to address the inappropriate activity. Uh, we realized that with the uh, combination of annual warmer weather, the Cedar River Library construction impacts to, to Liberty Park, and the relocation of the Homeless Meal Coalition to the Salvation Army Kitchen on Williams, it's possible there may be increased homeless activity along the Cedar River, and some of that activity uh, is inappropriate and illegal. So here are the steps we've taken to date during the past year with additional actions recently implemented. The uh, park and trail lighting from Bronson to Senior Center has been cleared of obstructions to allow better lighting along the trail. Trail lights, including underbridge lighting, are pro programmed to come on before sunset and remain on until 11 p.m. Uh, we're not able to leave the lights on all night due to the impacts on salmon in the river and the negative impact to adjacent neighborhoods. 
signage placed along the trail indicating trail hours of operation encouraging calls to 911 to support to report excuse me any suspicious activity we continue to update and replace these uh, signs as needed to ensure the best visibility we also uh, regularly have police bike patrols and other patrols in the area and in addition our parks crews patrol from 6 a.m until approximately 3 30 p.m and in the afternoon when they then need to go out and, and uh, do other work to prepare fields and other things um, but we do have uh, regular patrols in there from 6 a.m until the park closes with, between the police and our parks folks um, again because of the, the summer activity and the warmer weather and some of the other events i mentioned earlier we'll be reviewing uh, our ordinance on homeless enforcement for arlington washington to determine if there are any elements from their plan that could be incorporated here Community services will investigate placing barriers on benches to discourage the use of benches as beds. Community services will work with the police department to install cameras that will show potential illegal actions. And police will place additional emphasis on the Sea River through bike and other patrols, as I mentioned above. Community services will coordinate with uh, the Renton Ecumenical Area Association of Churches regarding their efforts and outreach to encourage sheltering with homeless individuals and to explore ways in which uh, they may assist us in discouraging inappropriate activity by certain homeless individuals. And uh, finally, we'll, uh, we're going to look into uh, whether or not different types of irrigation systems uh, could be implemented that would be programmed to go on sporadically during the hours the trails closed to deter unwanted activity. So I want to let you know it's always a balance. Uh, as the council knows, again, we have a uh, homeless population in this community and the, by far the majority of those folks are, are uh, people who are trying to live their lives just like we are and we want to try to provide those folks with shelter and clothing and meals so they can have a quality of life. But where there are individuals, homeless or not, who are uh, conducting uh, inappropriate and illegal activity, we'll, we want to be made aware of that and take care of that. So we want to encourage folks, if they see any inappropriate activity along the trail or anywhere else in the community, <coughs> please call us. Call 911. We will then get out there and investigate as soon as we can. And where we see suspicious or illegal activity, we will address that. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cummings. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Person. I would just like to comment if uh, Judge Shell and them would like to leave <laughs> early after 27 years of meetings, he most likely doesn't need to hear anymore. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next is uh, audience comment. We have several people that have signed up to address the council. When I call your name, please come up to the podium, give your name and city of residence for the record. And uh, you have five minutes to address the council. We have a timer next to the city clerk with a light on it. And when it gets to yellow, you've only got a few seconds left uh, in the five minutes. So first is Carl Norton. Hi, my name is Carl Norton, uh, N-O-R-T-O-N. Um, they wanted me to speak about uh, the meals in town. Well. I'll tell you that food stamps are the mission statement for food stamps are supplemental. So people that are on food stamps, that's a supplemental. They don't always have the rest of the income for what they need. Salvation Army has always been there, but they're just one church and they have limited resources. They do what they can. Our president has asked the private sector and the churches to step up and help in these times. The Renton churches all of them of all denominations have really come up and they've provided not just meals but a safe environment for these meals which is very important uh the the troublemakers i've been out here a while i know most of the people and they're very few and i know the renton police department is very sufficient there's no reason why they can't address the troublemakers and leave alone like you say the people that are just trying to exist and maybe get back on their feet uh, the uh, the churches and Salvation Army and the cold weather shelter from the city have all been very helpful. Just want to say thank you. Thank you. I, and I want to emphasize something, just the tail end of Jay's comments earlier. We recognize that a lot of the problems that we have with either drug activity or other other illegal activity on the trail is not necessarily homeless people, but but people that are looking for a place to cause problems. So uh, we don't want anyone to have the sense that uh, 
all the problems that we're experiencing have has to do with homelessness. That's clearly not the not the message. So, thank, thank you. you. Next is Greg Latin. Uh, my name is Greg Latin, and uh, I've been uh, homeless for a couple years now. And uh, I'd like to thank the churches and uh, Salvation Army for providing meals. And uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Next is Fortress Smith. Hello, my name is Fortress Smith, S-M-I-T-H. I wish to thank all you guys, fire department, police department, churches, for helping the homeless. I really appreciate it. You guys have a great day, and God bless. Thank you for coming here. Appreciate it. Next is Howard McComber. Howard McComber. I live in the Ranton Highlands. <clears throat> I want to first of all apologize I got a brand new phone. I don't know how to <laughs> shut it off. And you know, I'd be the most embarrassed moment in the world would be what the judges up here are getting his uh, award. So, my apologies to all of you. We have here. First of all, I want to thank these men for coming here tonight. That's very hard um, in their position to come here and to speak in front of television cameras and the city government. You guys are awesome, and they know it, but they wanted to show their appreciation for what you guys are doing uh, to help the people in our town. Now, if I push the right button, which shade tried on me. Did I blow it? What do I need to do? Push it again. The green button? Yep. Push it one more time. OK. There you go. Ah, there it is. OK, we got it. Okay, first of all, I want to thank you personally for your tremendous support. I know that um, there are people on the dais who, with their friends and associates, provide most of the food that we serve early in the morning and uh, at 5.30 and other places where the people need a, uh, they need a meal. What we do in these meals is not only serve a meal, but these are our guests, so when we get through serving, we take a plate and we sit down and we enjoy each other's company. It's very important, most important thing are the people involved. And uh, as we work at trying to make this a happier, kinder, better place to live, uh, we can succeed as we show compassion and love. And that's 99% of it. I happen to know that there are people in this room who have always paid at least 10% of their income to charity and countless hours. And, uh, and I appreciate the service, this, all the service adding together, everybody working together, everybody being inclusive, has a tremendous positive effect in Renton. Uh, the judge had a great deal to do with Kulon Park, and I think that that's fabulous and should not be uh, in any way uh, felt anything, but it was just super. But I think that making everybody in Renton feel important and given a, a better life and a reach out to these people, everybody, that is our chance to give a legacy so that later on some of you who live very long can stand up here and say, I remember when somebody didn't feel real welcome in Renton and that's no longer true. And I think that's so important. We all have to work together on that. We all have causes. I have mine. And this is one of them right here. This is our, I'd like, this is a save the date moment here. On Thursday, October the 2nd, we're going to have a um, gala event. It's going to be an auction. It'll be a silent auction as well as a live auction. Everybody's invited to come. We're, we are asking for donations. And that'll be up to you. When you come to one of these things, you're helping to support uh, some wonderful people doing wonderful things. And it takes, it takes money to do this, just like I'm sitting on the mayor's board of uh, budget, the budget advisory group, and we're trying our best to have success. And that's the most important thing we can do, is, is how we give and what we do, and the way we act and, and the people we include. 
So what we have now is an opportunity for those who'd like to come on October the 2nd, uh, at Thursday, uh, to have some fun and to uh, participate. Participate in in helping to fund our organization. It'll be at 233 Burnett Avenue South in Renton at the Renton Pavilion, and we'll have this information out. I'm sure we can spread it around. But just wanted you to save the date of October the second as an opportunity. I think that the most important thing we're all doing, we all are working to get Renton the way we think it's going to be best. We all have our, our hopes and dreams, and they don't all coincide. As, as Greg told me the other, the other day when we were meeting, sometimes there's a positive friction that goes up because we have our, our things that we really care about deeply, and sometimes, well, we just do, we care tremendously. And I know everyone up there has something special. And everyone up there is trying to make Renton a better place to live. And we can all join with REACH, because REACH is doing wonderful things for people. We are trying our best to reach out to uh, those who don't have and give them an opportunity to have dignity and success and to be able to be contributing members of our society. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Taylor. Howard, I just want to thank you for taking the time to help some of our uh, folks at home see the face of some of the people bringing Carl Fortress and Greg here tonight. And I want to thank you guys for uh, having the courage to come up here and to, and to, and to speak, speak about uh, you know, your, 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 your situation so the people at home can know that and uh, can understand you know how they can support and help change the lives of people that have you know are going through some struggles right now and so Howard I thank you for uh, being a, a leader in the community that knows how to go into places where many people can't go don't know how to and connect with people in a very natural and authentic way and to encourage them to come before us to help us to, to, to hear the story and to become inspired on how to do more thank you Howard Next is Kenneth Randolph. Good evening, honorable members of the Renton City Council. My name is uh, K.A. Randolph, R-A-N-D-O-L-F as in Frank. I'm a member of the uh, Committee to Free Nestora Salgado. She is a, uh, one of your citizens, or one of your residents of the city of Renton. She's a citizen of the United States. Um, she's a 42-year-old uh, mother of three, grandmother of four, and uh, she's now uh, being confined in a maximum security prison in the state of Nayarit, uh, Mexico, which, uh, for those of you that may not know, is one of the most infamous and dangerous prisons in the entire uh, country of Mexico. She's been uh, detained down there since uh, August 21st, 2013. Um, since the time that she's been detained, she's, uh, she's lost 30 pounds. She's, help, she's being held in uh, conditions that I think can be described uh, as violating basic human rights. And uh, just to make emphasize that point uh, she was visited uh, in the last few months by six Mexican senators that's senators from the from the federal government of Mexico uh, in that prison and uh, those senators described her circumstances and her conditions like uh, basically like this and they they stated that she was a political prisoner and I'm quoting them now and she's a political prisoner receiving harsh treatment under inhumane conditions amounting to psychological torture um, and they demanded an investigation by both the United States government and by the Mexican government, neither one of which has, uh, you know, satisfied that request as, as I speak now. <coughs> now, <coughs> it's natural to ask, you know, why, <coughs> why would a, uh, a resident <coughs> or how does a resident of the city of Renton and a U.S. citizen end up 
you know, in the heart of Mexico? That's obviously a very big question. <clears throat> and just to give a brief explanation, you'll hear from one of her family members, her daughter, in, in just a moment <clears throat> to maybe explain more about this. But <clears throat> let me just say this. At beginning in the, in, in the year 2000, um, after she had already developed a pretty comfortable life here, uh, right here in this area, first in Bellevue, then in Renton, uh, raised a family of three kids, worked very hard, you know, three, uh, three jobs, and then became a naturalized citizen of the United States. She did it, you know, what most of us would consider the right way. Um, anyway, after she established a, a pretty decent life for herself here, she began to uh, uh, visit, uh, you know, her, the people of her birthplace in the city of, uh, of uh, um, Nayarit, excuse me, and uh, it's the state of Nayarit. <laughs> anyway, to, to bring back um, uh, to the people of her birthplace, you know, t toys, food, clothing, and things of that sort. <laughs> Beginning in 2008, <clears throat> after she had made a number of visits there, you know, over a number of years, <clears throat> that uh, area where she lives in, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a, it's a small city actually called Olinala. It's in the state of uh, Guerrero. Uh, correct myself. Um, Anyway, she, uh, they developed a, a, a very big problem with uh, drug crimes, with murders, with kidnappings, and things of that sort. And she belongs to a community uh, in that town uh, that consists of uh, people that are, that are classified as indigenous people. And those people might be the most closely associated uh, with here in the United States as uh, Native Americans. And under the uh, Mexican and, and the state constitution of Guerrero, uh, indigenous people have a number of rights, including the right of self-defense and the right to form their own police force, which they did in uh, 2012. <clears throat> uh, because the local police force and the, and the local and municipal governments uh, were you know, very much corrupted by drug cartels and various other uh, organized crime syndicates. <clears throat> the people of uh, the town, Olinala, uh, elected her to be the organizer and the coordinator of this police force, which cons consisted of 170 uh, members. And uh, shortly after the time that she was elected as coordinator by them, uh, they made an arrest of a local official, and um, uh, in the, in the, he was being charged for interfering with uh, uh, a crime scene that involved a double murder and drug trafficking. And this created a conflict between uh, this police force, this community police force, and, and the corrupt local and municipal officials around there. And she found herself within a few weeks of that uh, arrest, or a few days of that arrest rather, uh, being arrested by herself. Her and a few of the other members of the community police force were arrested uh, by the Mexican military. And this was on August 21st, 2013. And so she's been uh, held at this maximum security uh, prison ever since without having, uh, for most of that time until just a week ago, uh, without having had the ability to see a lawyer, uh, uh, without having basic uh, you know, access to, to good food and nutrition. She's lost 30 pounds since she's been in confinement over the last 10 months. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Randolph, your five minutes is up. Um, did you want to allow Ms. Rodriguez to complete the story? Or do I see she's not talking the same subject? Mr. Mayor, yes, I'd Mr. like to make a motion that we just give uh, Mr. Randolph a couple more minutes to wrap his uh, comment up and then move. Okay. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to give Mr. Randolph a couple more minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, let me just say, wrap it up real quickly, but time passes by fast. But um, <clears throat> let me just say quickly that uh, recently on June 16th, I have a packet here for at least five of you because Mr. Taylor and Mr. Pavoni already have the information. We had a chance to meet with them uh, uh, before this uh, meeting here. But um, so I have a packet. Can I give that to the city clerk? Yes, you sure can. Okay, that's for five of you. And that's a general background information about the case. But <clears throat> what our committee uh, is here for is because obviously Ms. Salgado and her family members, uh, you know, they're, they're residents of the city of Renton, this is, which is why we're here. We think that this, the, the city council needs to address this and, and uh, speak to it in the form of a resolution. And what our committee, the committee to free uh, Nestora Salgado in Seattle would like <clears throat> is we, we'd like you to uh, pass a resolution. And in that packet, you'll already see that there are a couple of resolutions that have been passed by non-legislative bodies. Um, 
uh, Labor Council and the uh, Martin Luther King uh, Celebration uh, Committee pass resolutions and we'd like you to consider over the next uh, week or two to, uh, to, to take on a resolution of that, uh, of that kind, basically calling for the Mexican government to, uh, for her immediate release, acknowledging her as a resident of uh, Renton and a U.S. citizen, acknowledging her status, if you can, as a political prisoner, uh, as some members of our government did and some members of the Mexican government have. Uh, and requesting uh, in particular that the Washington congressional delegation uh, uh, you know, be active in seeking the store's release and also urging King County Council to pass uh, a similar resolution. That's what we'd like to like you to consider in a resolution to support okay. that case. So, All right, thank anyway. you. Ms. Rodriguez. Thank you very much. is Griselle Rodriguez. I'm a resident of Renton. Uh, Rodriguez, R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to be here and speak in front of you. And I would just like to, um, I would like to, I'm sorry. What we're seeking is, you know, to, to spread our, the story out the most we can. I, we believe that all pressure, social pressure, um, political pressure, anything can help bring my mom back. She, she is being held under horrible conditions. She, until about, um, she has not yet seen uh, her attorney until about two weeks ago they granted her attorney the right to see her. And he hasn't been able to see her yet. She has, ha, suffers from severe neuropathy. They've denied her medication. She has, um, she's been served raw food. She's been served food with rocks in it, one which broke her molar. Um, she's been denied clean water. She's been denied the most basic things that a human needs. She's been denied any social contact. She's been held in isolation for the past 11 months. And like Mr. Randall said, she's lost 30 pounds in the past 11 months. And all we're asking for is for help. for help to bring me home. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Taylor. Um, uh, Mr. Randolph uh, con contacted um, Armando and myself. I, I, I presume that other council members had been contacted but learned that they had not. And so we uh, met with the uh, family and uh, requested that packets be uh, distributed to the other council members so they can read, get more background information on the story. Um, Mr. Randolph and Grissel indicated that the reason that they're approaching here at City uh, of Renton is obviously because this is the home of a Natura uh, Salgado. So and uh, uh, they also have been successful in getting the support of uh, Congressman Adam Smith. He signed on also as a supporter. And so I would like for our council members to review, you know, this packet over the holiday uh, mm -hmm. weeks that we're going to be off, come back at the next council meeting, and I would, <coughs> I'd be uh, making a motion that we adopt a resolution with similar language as some of the other resolutions in support of uh, the release of uh, Ms. Natora Salgado. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Taylor. Mm -hmm. Next is Diane Dobson. <coughs> Thank you. Good evening, Diane Dobson, uh, last name spelled D-O-B-S-O-N, citizen in Renton, downtown Renton, Washington. Uh, exact address is on your form. Came to the council last Monday, beginning Thursday and through the weekend, there was a very strong police president presence along the, the city of Renton um, Cedar River Trail. And for that, I thank you to begin with. Uh, most of the officers that were instructed to do foot patrol on the trail do. 
tonight before coming up, uh, rent police officer drove stole slowly along the Riverside Drive, overlooked the, the five homeless individuals sleeping on the, the benches. I say homeless. I'm going to make a strong differentiation right now between homeless and vagrants, and there, there's a big difference. The problem is the homeless are interacting with the vagrants, and the line becomes less defined. And while I appreciate, truly, truly appreciate, I volunteer, I, I give my time, energy, as money as well, I do want a peaceful way of life and enjoyment. Tonight I had to go to the Salvation Army and ask them, please ask your, your patrons to stop throwing their garbage in, in, our, in our yard. Throwing. They recognized it, they'll do it. I don't want to have to be the face going out there. Um, we've continued to do digging between neighbors, facts, etc. I've attempted to relay the information together with a very clear message to your neighborhood resource officer of, I am scared, and I'd like to give the neighborhood resource officer details so that they can consolidate them with other neighborhoods and neighborhood watch programs. Um, the message I received back was, your email was forwarded to the chief. I haven't heard from an officer since Friday. In my email, I told them I'm scared. Um, but it appears communication may be one of the biggest problems within the city, at least as far as this goes. I don't want to assume with the rest of the city, and I'm not, I'm not here about that. I've spoken to mul multiple Parks Department employees over the weekend who have relayed criminal information to the police department, yet the police department seems surprised to find out there's prostitution in Renton. Yeah, prostitution in Renton. The city's hands-off approach to the homeless issues has allowed a group of vagrants to move into your city. They're bringing crime, drugs, women to those that are looking. They have patterns of behavior that I've tried to explain to the police department for the last two years, but I'm now told those details don't always get relayed. I met with city officials and the chief in 2013, was assured action would happen. It never did. We were advised the signage that Jay Covington has referenced tonight was never put up installed before because the department head didn't relay the information to the employees. Um, for two years, I've insisted to the Parks Department that the lights are not on the trail 24-7. At Prince, she sat in a meeting with me where we were assured by the community, um, I apologize, I don't know the department, we were assured by that department that the lights were on for 24 hours. Yet every police officer I've spoken with, every Parks Department employee, knows those lights aren't on. We're told tonight by Mr. Covington those lights can't be on for 20, over 24 hours because of the detriment it causes to the salmon. I appreciate the, the natural spawning habitat and I'd probably be more sympathetic to the fish if the last two years the city didn't blow me off saying that the lights were on. Um, the communication breakdown to me as a citizen is, is, is unnerving. To sit with a city official and be told that the lights were on, to have a city official told the wrong information, that's disconcerting that that's going on within your departments. Speaking with the Parks Department, they seem as frustrated as I do. They've indicated they've reported to the police department's problems with drinking, violence between the pimps and the prostitutes, and the prostitution going on, yet the police don't know about this. The individuals that I'm speaking of have, speaking of have claimed their territory. Last year it was so brazen I had to call the police because they set up chairs on the corner because they didn't want to walk up and down the stairs, assumably they didn't want to walk up and down the stairs to deliver their drugs to the people that drive over and whistle. I've relayed patterns of behavior to your police department and they're not interested in getting more details. Within the last two months we had an individual that was climbing through a window of an apartment building that the citizens had to stand there and wait and insist that the police do something. This individual was shot and a known drug dealer in the area. There's more problems going on in your city that you council members aren't aware of. And I appreciate the fact that you have a distance between yourself and what's going on. But your police department and your parks department and your city departments need to have better communication. And I'm coming to you telling you I'm scared and I hope there's not a breakdown of communication that results in any more citizens having to put their necks on the line and step out into the radar of these people before the police department does something. Thank you. Next is uh, consent agenda. We have eight items for the council to consider. Are there any items that council member would like pulled for discussion? Yes, Ms. Breyer. I'd like to remove 
of items D, E, and F. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I move the cons consent agenda be approved uh, minus items D, E, and F. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Person, seconded by Mr. Prince. The council concur with the consent agenda mm -hmm. minus items D, E, and F. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Ms. Breyer. Uh, yes. Um, these three items both um, ask for a waiver for fees that uh, we typically give to them every year. Um, one is for the Cast for Kids fishing event. One is for the 2014 Take a Warrior Fishing. And the third is a fee for the activity room for the Renton Youth Advocacy Center's fundraising event. And rather than um, putting these off and seeing them at the Finance Committee, I just recommend that we go ahead and approve them at this point and uh, they can get on with their fundraising and Second. Okay. Good, okay. good idea. It's been moved by Ms. Breyer, seconded by Mr. Corman. The council approve items D, E, and F. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Next is unfinished business. Uh, Mr. Person? No unfinished business. Okay, Mr. Prince? No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Breyer? Uh, yes, the um, <clears throat> Finance Committee has a couple of committee reports. Finance Committee Report, Approval of Claims and Payroll Vouchers. The Finance Committee approves for payment on July 14, 2014, claim vouchers 330285 through 330610, one wire transfer and one payroll run with benefit withholding payments, totaling $4,343,993.17, and payroll vouchers include 725 direct deposits and 83 payroll checks totaling $1,593,928.80. This is signed by the three committee members. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Ms. Breyer. Move that council concur with this committee report. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Breyer, second by Ms. Palmer. The council <laughs> concur with the finance committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it. Finance committee report, Riverview Bridge, uh, Riverview Park Bridge Demolition Project. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to award the construction contract for the Riverview Park Bridge Demolition Project as solicited through the small public works roster process to Imperial Dem Demolition and Earthworks in the amount of $192,030.15. The committee further recommends that the mayor and city clerk be authorized to execute the contract. This is signed by the three committee members. Mr. Mayor, yes, Ms. Brown. Um, this is a project that we've been looking at for some time, and at one point it was um, one combined project, and now it's been broken into um, a couple just to make uh, fish windows and some of those important things and contracts um, go. So this is the first portion where they're going to actually um, demolish the bridge. And as um, Mr. Covington said in his announcements earlier about timing and signage and Santa cans and all of that so everything will be well posted and people will be aware that at least for the next year or so this bridge will be, will be gone and there are other ways that they can get to that park should they need to so with that I'd like to um, ask council to approve the finance committee report second it's been moved by Ms. Breyer second by Ms. Palmer that council concur with the finance committee report all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed you guys have it Mr. Pavoni no unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Really? No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Corman? No unfinished business, Mr. Okay. Mayor. And Ms. Palmer? No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Moving on to resolutions and ordinances. We have one resolution, and we have one ordinance for second and final reading. The resolution concerns the city uh, deferred mm. comp plan. A resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, ratifying and confirming, one, the city's request for proposal process and retention of a 457B plan consultant to termination of the Hartford and ICMA Retirement Corporation <coughs> as the city's 457B record keepers and plan asset custodians. Three, selection of a TIA CREF as the city's 457B plan record keeper and plan asset custodian. Four, the execution of the 457B contracts by Nancy A. Carlson, uh, human risk uh, human Resources Risk Management Administrator. 
Five, transfer of the city's 457B plan assets to TIACRAF. Six, all actions taken and all contracts executed by city employees in this process. And seven, authorizing annual reports by the plan's investment committee for further review and ratification each year by the city. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Person. I move the resolution be adopted as read. Second. Then moved by Mr. Person, seconded by Mr. Prince that council adopt this resolution as read. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The uh, ordinance regarding uh, the annexation is for <coughs> second and final reading. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington annexing property consisting of approximately 17.1 acres of which the north and a portion of the east boundaries are coterminous with existing city limits uh, and the area is bordered to the south by parcel lines located near southeast 146th place by 161st avenue southeast and parcel lines to the east parcel lines in proximity to southeast 142nd place to the north and by 160th Avenue Southeast to the west. Uh, this annexation to be approved is the uh, Alpine Nursery Annexation. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Prince. I move the ordinance to be adopted as read. Second. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Prince, second by Ms. Breyer, that this ordinance be adopted as read. Requires a roll call. Mr. Person? Aye. Mr. Prince? Aye. Ms. Breyer? Excuse me. Oh, Ms. Breyer? Yes, aye. Uh, Mr. Pavoni? Aye. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Mr. Corman? Aye. Ms. Palmer? Aye. We'll call Mr. Mayor. All ayes. The ayes have it. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, before we move on to new business, I'm sorry. You know, I should have mentioned something uh, while during audience comment when um, Diane Dobson was, was making comments about staff. Because <coughs> this is the second week in a row that she's discussed about interactions with staff members. The first week was with a police officer in regards to an officer his answer to her frustrations was you ought to move if you can't live with us and I just wanted to let you know that we're taking those types of things very seriously it's the same thing with their comments today the Park Department is saying that they're reporting criminal activity and to the police we're we're actively checking with employees uh, to try to verify comments being made that may be truthful maybe not we, but we want to know we'd certainly uh, the Park Department and the Police Department are working very close together with all of the issues throughout the city, not just uh, on two blocks of the Cedar River. Um, in regards to the police officer uh, who's, who may have made a comment uh, to Ms. Dobson some time ago, uh, we had the Police Department follow up with, that, with her on that, and we're told that that was a comment that was 12 to 18 months ago, so she has no idea exactly when that occurred or who the officer may have been. We're following up with the most recent comments in regards to park employees, and so far, um, their their interpretation, uh, which they have re re reported to their staff, is a little bit different than we're we're hearing. So, uh, the, the most important thing is we know there's some issues. Um, we have uh, probably more people out on the trails now because of the warm weather. Uh, we 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 do a balancing act between people having the right to use a public trail. Um, and then those that are intimidating and creating criminal activities and we are going to address the criminal activities as aggressively as we can without violating the constitutional rights of people to be in public spaces. So the most important thing I want you to know is um, we are communicating very strongly and on a regular basis uh, interdepartmentally on all of these issues to solve the problems and um, we'll keep you apprised of any information that we have as these things progress. And please uh, don't hesitate to call if you have any questions about that. Moving on to new business, um, Mr. Person. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, next Monday is July 21st, and it's a council holiday, so there'll be no council meeting. <clears throat> July 28th, the following Monday, is also a council holiday after River Days, and there will be no uh, council. The next meeting will be August 4th, Monday, and at 5.30 p.m., the Committee of the Whole will meet in the council chambers, and uh, the first topic on the list is McComber request, and number two is emerging is issues in community and economic development department. That's okay. it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Prince. Yes, Mr. Mayor. The 
Planning Development Committee uh, scheduled for July 24th has been canceled. Okay, thank you. Ms. Breyer? I have no uh, committees to announce. Okay, Mr. Provani? Yes, the Utility Committee uh, scheduled for August 4th is canceled. Okay, Mr. Taylor? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, the uh, Community Services Committee scheduled for or would be scheduled for August the 4th is also going to be canceled as well, and that is all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Corman? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, continuing that pattern, the August 4th Public Safety Committee meeting is also being canceled. Okay, and last but certainly not least, Ms. Palmer? Here we go. Uh, the Transportation Committee normally scheduled for this mm -hmm. Thursday, uh, July 24th at 4 p.m. has been canceled. And then just one other item, Mr. Covington mentioned two picnics coming up, and we also have the La Crosse Neighborhood Picnic coming up this Thursday. Oh, did you? Okay. I missed that one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That See you hurt. there at all three. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's it. Uh, was there anybody who wanted to address the council? Didn't have an opportunity? Any staff member wants to get up? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Wish? Mayor, move we adjourn. Second. And move by Mr. Person, seconded by Mr. Corman, that we adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned.